James Woolsey, thank you for being with us. Glad to be with you. So as of now, as we're speaking, America's National Security Agency cannot collect en masse phone records and it can't search them. What impact is that having on our national security? It's important to realize what one means by records. What has been collected uh, by NSA is the outside of the envelope, if it were a letter. That is, the addressee, the addresser, and the date and time, not the substance of the communication. That has not been being collected by NSA. That's my problem. I think that uh, Senator Paul and the others who are blocking and cutting back on the collection even of the so-called metadata, the address on the envelope, are making it far more difficult than they need to for us to take steps to understand what uh, groupings of terrorists might be beginning to pull together and communicate with one another and so forth. Well, can you tell us a bit more about why the collection of that metadata of phone records is so useful in tracking extremists? Well, uh, with the large uh, uh, calculation capabilities of modern uh, computers, one can sometimes find patterns. And if uh, I'm bin Laden, and you and I are engaged in back and forth of uh, emails, even without looking at what you say or what I say, uh, the computer system may well be able to say, well, why is she or she and Woolsey undergoing this communication? And then, since they suspect me of terrorism, they can go get a warrant. And only with a warrant, having gone to the court, can they look at the substance of our communications and see whether it's harmless or important? So this could be an important tool, for example, in the threat from Islamic State in combating that threat. Absolutely. And I think that it's a bad idea to have cut back even as much as the compromise would have cut back uh, on being able to get at this so-called metadata. This is the compromise whereby phone companies hold all the metadata mm -hmm. and the government has to apply to a court right, to be able to Right, because these are independent companies and unless a, a statute governs their behavior, uh, they can say, well, uh, you know, we've kept it for a month, uh, uh, sayonara. Uh, they don't need to keep it longer. They can keep it for a week or a day or a year or whatever. And that makes it very, very hard for anybody with the computers to find the pattern that I hypothetically came up with about you and me and the law. Right, but critics of this row would say that there are other ways for the government to collect this intelligence. It doesn't need to have all this metadata of phone records. It's a matter of uh, what is doable affordably and straightforwardly with the computers that they have and with the practices that they have. But this does not intrude on people's privacy any more than the old system that was approved by the Supreme Court back in the 1950s of, again, take an example, if we wrote letters to one another back then, they could read the, the address or the addressee, the postmark, but they could not open the letter and they can't open the communications, the, I, the uh, emails here. Does it surprise you this tension between the right to privacy and the right to gather intelligence to protect Americans? Well, these are all genuine movements in American politics. Uh, there's concern on both the right and left about privacy. Uh, there's a, a, a certain amount of isolationism, I think, creeping in here the way we had in the 1930s. There's libertarianism uh, uh, generally. Uh, we don't have nicely cropped uh, parties that stay within boundaries. Uh, we, we are more entertaining than that, I'm afraid. And uh, uh, so I, I don't uh, criticize the, the values or the, uh, uh, or the sincerity of anybody who's in part of this debate, but I do think that the people who are cutting back on our ability just to even use the metadata are acting very dangerously. James Wolsey, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Good to be with you.